A very fundamental question in higher level math, especially real analysis, is can you interchange limits and integration? And this is a beautiful example that would be so cool for you to understand. And here basically what we are having is we're taking the integral from zero to one of nx to the n dx. That depends on n. So for each n, we get a different answer. It's a sequence of numbers. We're taking the limit of that sequence of numbers. That's the left-hand side. The right-hand side is what we do is we take the limit inside the integration. So for each fixed x, we take the limit as n goes to infinity of nx to the n. That's going to be something depending on x. So it's going to be a function of x. And then we take the integral of that function. And this is not equal to the left-hand side. So we cannot interchange the limit and integration. And this is a very important counterexample to many famous theorems in math what are called dominated convergence theorems, where you can actually exchange the integral and limit sign. And I'm gonna show this to you right now. So even if you don't know those theorems, at least you can appreciate this if you keep on going with higher level math. So let's just dive right into this. So first of all, the left-hand side is what's going to be easier to calculate, okay? So let's actually calculate the left-hand side. So here we have the integral from zero to one of nx to the n dx. So if we fix n, what's going to happen is we're going to get, so we're taking limit n goes to infinity, n is fixed here. Um, the antiderivative is just going to be nx to the n plus one by n plus one. So we're going to get nx to the n plus one by n plus one, and we're going to have the limits going from zero to one. So of course at zero, this function is zero, and at one, it's going to be n over n plus one. So we're just going to get the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus one, and that's just going to equal to one. Okay, so the left-hand side is going to be one. What about the right-hand side? Okay, so that's what we're gonna figure out next. What happens to the right-hand side? So here we've got a function of x that we have to figure out. Okay, what is that function? So limit n goes to infinity of nx to the n. What's that gonna be? Okay, so what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna give you a bit of intuition here. So nx to the n, we're fixing x and trying to find that limit, okay? And here we're interested as zero less than or equal to x less than one, okay? So those are the domains of our functions. And so the point is that when x is less than one, okay? So when x is one, this is going to be infinity, okay? But the point is that that's just going to be one point. It's not going to affect the integral, okay? But that's kind of in the realms of what we call Lebesgue integration. I'm just gonna focus on Riemann integration. I'm gonna look at zero less than or equal to x less than one. But here what happens, let's say if we take x is half, we're looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of n times half to the n. And the idea here is that two to the n grows much faster than n, okay? So two to the n is exponential growth, n is just linear growth. So this is just going to equal to zero. And it wouldn't matter what number we chose, if it's less than one, powering that number by n is going to go to zero much faster than n is going to go to infinity. So this is always going to be zero for each x, but how do we prove it rigorously? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix zero less than or equal to x less than one. Okay, fix such an x. And once I've fixed x, I'm gonna define a n to be equal to n x to the n. What happens to the ratios of successive terms of this sequence? I want to show that the terms go to zero. So I'm gonna look at the ratios. So I'm gonna look at a n plus one over a n, which is going to equal to n plus one times x to the n plus one divided by n times x to the n. And of course here what happens is we cancel, so we can cancel off, I'm just gonna use a red marker here, we can cancel off the x to the n and we're gonna get an x at the top. So it's gonna be n plus one over n times x. That's going to be the ratio. Now the intuition here is that if x is a fixed number, right? We're fixing x and taking the limit as n goes to infinity. If x is a fixed number, then what's going to happen is n plus one over n as n gets really large, is going to be roughly one. So this ratio is going to be something that's roughly x, which is less than one. Okay, so if the ratio n plus one over n is eventually, okay, eventually for n sufficiently large, it's less than one, then you're just going to be multiplying by a number less than one over and over again, and you're going to approach zero. Okay, so that's the intuition. Um, very rigorously speaking, we can make it very rigorous as well. We can say, choose n sufficiently large that n plus one over n is less than one over x, which we can do because the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus one over n is one. So what we can do is we can say, um, choose, uh, choose big N such that, so I'm just gonna be very rigorous to show you rigorous proof-based math. N plus one over n is less than one over x for n at least big N. So choose that. Then what's going to happen is the ratio, so therefore the ratio an plus one over an is going to equal to n plus one over n times x. It's going to be less than one for n at least big n. Okay, so it's gonna be some number less than one for n at least big n. 
And because n plus one over n is a monotonically decreasing sequence, okay, so n plus one over n gets smaller and smaller as n gets larger and larger, you can even say it's going to be less than or equal to n plus one over n times x, which is going to be some number less than one. Okay, and then therefore you can conclude that because these ratios are always going to be less than some fixed number that's less than one, you can then conclude, for example, that therefore a times m um, is going to be less than or equal to n plus one over n power m minus n or x power m minus n times a n. Okay, and because a n is a fixed term of the sequence, we can take the limit as m goes to infinity of a b game is going to be this limit because n plus one over n times x is a fixed number. This limit as m goes to infinity is going to go to zero. Assuming you know that if you have a fixed number less than one, its limit as n goes to infinity of that number power n is going to be equal to zero. And then a big n is a fixed number. So therefore, this limit is going to approach zero, which means the m's are going to approach zero. Okay, so that's to be very, very rigorous. So that shows that therefore this, this thing inside the integral is always going to equal to zero for zero less than or equal to x less than one. So therefore, we're getting the integral from zero to one of one dx, which is just going to equal to, uh, oh, sorry, integral zero to one of zero dx, which is just going to equal to zero. Okay, so this limit is always going to be zero, so that, that integral is going to be zero. So that's not going to be equal to the left-hand side, which we evaluated to be one. So this is an example where you cannot interchange the limits and the integrals. This is a fundamental part of real analysis. There are theorems called the dominated convergence theorem, the Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem, which give you conditions under which you can actually interchange the limit and integral. So I'll do videos on that in the future. Subscribe for more real analysis, higher level, proof-based math, and interesting examples in math to get a deeper understanding of math, all levels of math, in this case calculus, beyond just the calculus class, in a way that you can understand. So this is typically taught in real analysis, but I think it's a beautiful example which I wanted to share with you. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to see you in the next video. I wish you all the best. Check out my real analysis playlist for lots more theory about real analysis, and I will see you in that playlist. It's gonna pop up on the screen here. I'll see you in the next video.